Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. I'm Hussein Kassiras, teacher, teacher trainer, and I would like to share with you some of the most very common methods and approaches. The best way to learn about these methods and approaches is to compare and contrast them. So let me start with one of the classical methods, the GTM or grammar translation method. And here I would like to compare grammar translation method with the direct method. So grammar translation method is a classical method. Let's focus on these elements. Number one, the teacher, the student, teaching learning process, language used, error correction, grammar, how grammar is taught, and interaction. So I'm going to compare these elements with the two approaches, or the, sorry, the two methods. Number one. For grammar translation method, the teacher has got authority. The teacher is the spoon feeder. The teacher is everything. The teacher is the center. Okay. For the student, so the teacher is active. The teacher is the center of the, the classroom, while the student is passive. What do we mean by passive? Learners are consumers. Learners are just listeners and the teacher is the spoon feeder. For the teaching learning process, grammar translation method, the best way to teach learners is by memorization and translation. We have to translate text from English to Arabic. And students should memorize these texts, these conversations. So these are the two major techniques, translation and memorization. Okay. For example, this is a marker, this is an eraser, this is a desk, this is a whiteboard. Repeat, whiteboard, desk, uh, marker. So they repeat and they have to memorize these words. Now, what about the word, sorry, the, the language used? For grammar translation method, the focus is more on the mother tongue. Marker, eraser, you have desk, maktab. Burda, Sabura, okay. So all the time using the mother tongue. If you are, if you, your mother tongue is Arabic, you will explain using Arabic. If your mother tongue is French, you will explain everything using French. Now, what about correcting mistakes or error correction? For grammar translation method, teachers correct mistakes immediately. I give you an example. For example, I taught my student the simple past and a student will practice. Teacher, teacher, yesterday I play tennis. The grammar translation method? No, 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 no. We don't say play, played. So the teacher immediately corrected to the student. Teacher, teacher, yesterday I go to school. No, we say yesterday I went to school. So we call it immediate correction. For grammar, according to grammar translation method, the grammar is taught deductively. What do we mean by deductively? The teacher starts from the very beginning giving students the form, the structure. For example, let's focus on the simple past. The teacher will start like this. Look, today we are going to study about the simple past. The simple past of regular verbs is verb plus ed. So V plus ed. So from the very beginning, the teacher gives the rule, then examples. What about interaction? We will see here that the dominant is the teacher. So teacher, students, teacher, students, teacher, students. That's why I said in the very beginning, the teacher acts as a spoon feeder. Great. Now, the second method, the direct. Hello, grammar translation. Are you crazy? This is not the way we teach English. This is not the way we learn English. So grammar, sorry, direct method came as a reaction against the classical method, which is grammar translation. Look here, the teacher is a partner. The teacher is a friend. So together they work, okay, in the classroom. Now, the student is very interesting. The student is active. The student participates more and more. But for grammar translation, the, the student is a consumer and a listener. Concerning the teaching learning process, as we said, for grammar translation is through tr translation and memorization. Direct method, no, come on. Students 
can learn when we associate meaning with the target language. So there must be a context when we teach a certain structure. What about language used? For grammar translation method, using the mother tongue, using Arabic is halal, it's okay. But for the direct method is haram, it's forbidden. So teachers do their best not to use the mother tongue. But the focus is more on the target language. If I'm teaching English, I have to use English. If I'm teaching French, I have to teach French. Now, what about error correction? Remember, for grammar translation, the immediate correction. Teacher play. No, we say play. Teacher go. No, we say went. For direct method, come on, wait. Let's give a chance to the learner to discover, to correct himself. Teacher, teacher, I played tennis yesterday. Look, remember? Yesterday. So, it's the past. So, what's the past of play? Oh, teacher, you are right. Yesterday, I played. So, we call it self-correction because the teacher gives some prompts. Teacher, teacher, yesterday I go to school. Oh, remember, go, go. Remember this one? The past. Oh, yes, teacher, is the past. So it is self correction. For grammar, the, the, the grammar translation, deductive approach. For the direct method, is the inductive. We don't start with verb plus ed, but I put the structure in context, in a paragraph, or in a, in a text, or in a conversation. And students should read the conversation and then guess and deduce the meaning and the form and the structure, etc. So inductive, we start with examples, then the form. But for the deductive, we start with the form, then we move to examples. Deductive, the teacher who gives the rule. Inductive, students who come with the rule. Now, what about the interaction? We said here, the dominant is the teacher, but look here, teacher, student. Then we have students, 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 students. So we can say here, students talk more than the teacher. But for the grammar translation, teacher talks more than students. And here we can talk about T, T, T is very high. And S, T, T is very low. It's the opposite here. T, T, T is low and STT is very high. So students will talk more than the teacher. Great. So these are two methods. Now, what about the next one? Look here. I'm going to compare two other interesting methods and approaches. We have the audiolingual method and the communicative language teaching approach. So the audiolingual method has got another name, it's the army. The army method. I'm gonna explain. For the audiolingual, the form is important. When I'm teaching, I focus on the structure, on the form. Simple past is ED. Simple future is will. Present continuous is B plus verb plus ING. So the form is the most important. Dialogues are memorized according to the audiolingual method. I explain. I'm gonna give my students a conversation. Hi, hi. How are you? I am fine. What's your name? I'm Muhammad. What do you do? I'm a student. So I expect students to memorize. Hi, hi. How are you? Who are you? Um, what's your name? My name is Muhammad. So students memorize. Now, for the audiolingual method, context or contextualization is not important. Let me clarify. What do we mean by context or contextualization is when you start with a text with a conversation, with a dialogue, with a story, and students should read the story about simple past, or the text about simple past, or the dialogue about simple past. So context is not important. Now drilling, repeat after me, repeat after me. Drilling is so important. A marker, students, repeat. A marker, white wood, white wood, glasses, glasses, head, head, mouth, mouth. So it's drilling. Very important, it's central for the audio language. Now, what about mistakes? Mistakes or errors are carefully avoided. Teachers tell students to avoid making mistakes, okay? They are not important, okay? 
So they must, I mean, Swiss must avoid them. Now, meaning for communicative language teaching, meaning is important. But for the audiolingual, the form is important. I play tennis. So play the verb plus ed is the important thing. Here's the meaning. I play tennis. I went to school. I did this and this. And what did you do? Where did you go? So the meaning, the conversation is the most important. It's essential. Dialogues are memorized. You have to remember to memorize, to learn by heart. But for the communicative language teaching, dialogues, conversations are practice. Hi, hi, how are you? I am fine. What's your name? My name is Hussein. Where are you from? I'm from Morocco. Where do you live? I live in Rabat. So practice. They ask and answer each other. But here they just memorize, they learn by heart. Now, context. Context here is not important. But here context is essential, is very important. When I teach something, I have to contextualize it. Drilling. For the audiolingual, drilling is so important. Repeat after me, repeat, repeat, okay. But here drilling may not occur, but not always, okay. We depend from time to time. What about errors? Errors are carefully avoided, but here errors are parts of learning. No problem, just make mistakes, you will learn. If you make mistakes, you are my best friend. I love you because you make mistakes. It's okay, they are very natural. So for communicative language teaching, teachers have a very positive attitude about making mistakes. Great. Now, I would like to, sh to explain more and to talk more about another method, which is the total physical response. And if you look at the picture, you will see here children. We can call them young learner. So this total physical response method is very important and very practical for students, for learners. And here, the coordination of speech and action. I'm going to explain. Students will look at me and they will listen and ask. Look, I am swimming. So students listen, watch, and then they have to repeat, they have to ask. I am swimming. I am flying. I am drinking. I am eating. I am, I am sleeping. So this is what we call listen watch and act. Total physical, all your body works and students follow. So both the teacher is the actor and students are actors as well. What is good about this approach is that the teacher and the students are actors and it is a low stress environment. Students feel happy. Students feel excited because they act, they move, they sit, they stand up, etc. Okay. And the most important is that students should be more active and talkative. They have to move and they have to talk. So this method is very practical, especially for young learners because we use our body, etc. Great, the next one is the silent way. And from the name, the silent way method teachers should be silent as much as possible. For example, I can start with an activity. I'm going to tell my students that I'm going to mime a story and your job is to identify. You listen, then you identify what is the story about. I'm going to, to tell you a story using my body language. Okay, this is a story, so you have to identify. I'm gonna tell the story I was sleeping, okay, then I got up 
and they found a monster in front of me, and it was running. Then I turned back, and it was running. That the monster was running. That the monster, monster caught me. Then I cried, and I found myself dreaming. It was just a dream. So here the teacher was silent, using only his, uh, I mean, his body language gestures. But students should come up with the story. This is the silent way. Try to be as much as possible silent. Okay. Great. The last one is suggestopedia, which means that the most important is the mind. We give more importance to the mind because the mind helps learners learn. learn. And also it's about yoga. Okay? So we would like students to relax. If the mind is relaxed, students can learn better. And the best example is when you give students a task and then you use a relaxing music. I'm using this relaxing music. Students will work together in groups for five or seven or ten minutes. They are working together on a certain task. And I'm using this. This is such a stupidia. If the mind is relaxed, students will learn much better and look here the main or suggestion is a language teaching method developed by the Bulgarian psychologist Georgi Luzanov. The method draws from insight from yoga okay and the main features the use of music to relax learners so we can opt for this method okay using nice music okay great now many students many teachers ask me trainer you think what is the best method or the best approach my simple answer there is no best method there is no best approach but it depends it depends on the level of learners it depends on the age of students, it depends on the size of the classroom, it depends on the type of the lesson, it depends if it is a morning session or an afternoon session, it depends on if it is a, a first session or the last session. So the best way is the eclectic. Try to choose some from this and some, some from this. Why? Because you are teaching individuals with different behaviors, different abilities, different perceptions. All right. Thank you.